Yo, what's good my people? Today we're headed on a journey, more like a quest, through the wonderful realms of Avatar, The Last Airbender. Now, Avatar has a lot of history. The Nickelodeon cartoon, Avatar, The Last Airbender, it wasn't just popular when it was airing. It was straight up legendary. And this show had everyone vibing with its mix of fantasy, adventure, and real talk about friendship, redemption, and finding yourself. I mean, we're talking about a show that had us laughing one minute and catching feelings the next. Not only that, but this epic show draws inspiration from all kinds of Asian vibes and legends with slick animation, some brutal looking fight scenes, and don't even get me started on that soundtrack. Bottom line, Avatar The Last Airbender wasn't just a cartoon, it was a whole mood and I still vouch for that cartoon as a certified classic. Real quick, before we dive deeper, let's talk about diversity, especially in Avatar The Last Airbender. So I was scrolling through the internet, minding my own business, and what did I stumble upon? A whole heap of drama surrounding Kiwento's casting in the live action Avatar The Last Airbender series. Now, hold up a sec. <clears throat> I need to unpack this craziness. So Katara, the waterbending queen, is said to be played by none other than Kiwento, a proud Mohawk actress, and you'd think everyone would be celebrating this young woman's success, right? <sighs> Cue to online haters throwing shade like they're auditioning for a villain role. So to all the keyboard warriors out there throwing shade at Kimento, stop it. This ain't about light or dark, it's about everyone owning their narratives and celebrating every shade of the rainbow. And the Kimento, keep slaying girl. This avatar tribe's got your back and we can't wait to see you bend water like a boss. Now, let's get back into the show. Now, one of the things I loved about the show is that there are these fighting styles and they're as diverse and rich in each of the nations as the cultures they represent. Each bending discipline, fire, water, earth, and air is rooted in the unique cultures of its respective nation, meaning water benders draw their strength from the moon, harnessing the ebb and flow of tides to manipulate water with fluid and grace. Water benders draw inspiration from Tai Chi, a fluid and graceful form that mirrors the flowing movements of water itself. Earthbenders, on the other hand, they find solace in the solidity of the earth beneath their feet, and they embody the principles of Hungar Kung Fu, a style characterized by strong stances, rooted footwork, and powerful strikes. Firebenders, with their fiery temperament, they channel the energy of the sun itself. Now, firebenders channel the dynamic energy of the northern Shaolin Kung Fu, a style marked by swift movements, quick strikes, and explosive power. And let's not forget about the airbenders, masters of agility and freedom. Airbenders emulate the free-flowing movements of Bagua Zhang, a martial art known for its circular footwork, evasive maneuvers, and emphasis on adaptability. I love what they do with these martial arts styles because not only do they showcase the diversity of the nations, but they also serve as a reflection of their philosophies and values of each of the different nations. That, my friends, is great storytelling. And real quick, if you're new here, I need you to go ahead and hit that like button, right? If you like what you're seeing. It won't cost you anything, I promise. And it'll be a big help for me. YouTube still uses this in 2024 to help smaller channels like me to grow. So thank you. If you're giving me your time, please give me a like. Anyway, now let's hop into the things about Avatar The Last Airbender that I liked. Let's hop into the good. And seriously, from heart-stopping battles to heartwarming friendships, the original Nickelodeon series set the bar sky high. And guess what? This Netflix adaptation isn't backing down. The character development, the intricate plot lines, it's actually here. And it's being served up with a side of nostalgia that makes this fan's heart skip a beat. I like how this episode just dives right into the action and it gives us that cool glimpse of Capital City, the home of the Earthbenders burning as the fire nation attacks we also get a good look at the comet in the sky and that's a big talking point in the series i really love the sound and music in this moment too like this netflix show does a really good job of setting the ambiance and immersion by reusing and modernizing the sounds of avatar the last airbender which i believe are a huge part of the show 
I remember being mesmerized by the presentation of Avatar, especially during the action scenes. There's this fluidity and grace in the fighting, but it also looks like something you'd see in a real life martial arts fight. And every hit from one of these rocks from this earthbender, it looks like it hurt, hurt. Like homie was going straight Mortal Kombat on some NPCs and my gosh, the violence. So what did you think of the Fire Nation's portrayal in the live action version? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep it in because I'm hyped right now, but I'm gonna need y'all to come back here after watching the first episode and let me know what you think of how the Fire Nation is presented in this live action version. I like how Netflix seems to have a handle on adapting everything and everyone, especially the costumes from the animation in the comics. Now, Netflix has got a good track record, right? They did Jupiter's Legacy, Cowboy Bebop, One Piece. Say what you want about those shows. They look visually stunning compared to the source material. This show is no different and it continues that great tradition. Aang's costume is just really cool. I remember being mesmerized by Aang's appearance, especially his head and back tattoos. Like when we got that first image of him, I just kept staring at it and then looking at the cartoon, staring at it and then looking at the cartoon. His look is a visual representation of his journey etched into his very being. And this kid, Gordon Cormier, my eyebrow brother who plays Aang is really, really good as Aang. And I'll get to that. And I just want to appreciate the way they updated the look of Aang while also somehow making it feel natural to me. Now back to my eyebrow brother and the rest of the cast. Yo, the cast in this show is fire. No pun intended. Like there are a couple of moments where I can't front. I'm the type of person who notices the hairpiece on Uncle Ira, but I'm mostly looking at the cast and I'm thinking, you look like the cartoon, for real. And I'm with it. Aang, Sokka, OMG, Sokka. You really appreciate how these characters look after you see them in action. Oh, and my guy Ian Owsley is hilarious as Sokka and a bit of a scene stealer. The character was always like, you know, funny in the original, but Ian here is playing the character so well in this first episode with such good comedic timing that he just highlights all of his scenes. Whether he's cracking jokes while he's big brother and his sister or showing heart and courage by being a protector for others, Ian found a way to show the range in the character. Let's talk about the Fire Nation elites though, Uncle Ira and Prince Zuko. Talk about character depth. From Uncle Iris spinning some sage wisdom to Zuko's angry energy. <laughs> like, yo, I don't know where they found Dallas, James Lou, the kid playing Prince Zuko, but they might have just did a little too well with this casting. Like, watching Dallas, James Lou channel Zuko's black Nike energy is like witnessing the young Sub-Zero in the making. And I'm here for it. But hey, nothing's perfect, right? So... Of course, in the spirit of balance, let's address the bad. Now, <clears throat> while the opening sequence, it really does pay homage to the original, there are a few tweaks here that left me scratching my head. Now, one of those changes is the line they say like in the opening credits, like right when Aang shows up, you know, they have that opening, he's spitting on his air ball and then he stands at this cliff. And in the live action version, they say, an airbender who may not be ready for the responsibility of becoming the Avatar. And that's his send off as he's looking over the cliff. And in the original, it was slightly different. And I think it sounded a lot more optimistic because they go, although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he can save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. Now, my reaction is just based on the first episode and I know you Avengers are going to go watch like the whole season. So I'm going to protect myself from y'all coming at me in the comments and just say that I don't know if they change this in later episodes yet. I'm watching an early version of the show and I only have the first episode. So I don't even get like finished effects. Some of the CGI is not done. So you might see something different than I see when it comes on Netflix. All right. So don't be coming for me in the comments. Anyway. Next thing that I put under the bad is uh, there's a couple of moments when the writing seems a bit raw, whether it's funky dialogue or just awkwardly delivered lines. There's a few moments where the delivery just seems a little cringy. There are lines from some of the supporting characters or some of the leads that they just come off stiff. 
and they're uncomfortable and these moments happen and they are distracting from the immersion in the moment. My last tidbit for the bad is some of the hair pieces. They do a great job with the costumes and looks of the characters for the most part, but like I mentioned earlier, there's a few moments where Uncle Iris' hair piece just doesn't look great. It could be due to me receiving a pre-release version, so maybe I'm missing some of the overall effects, but eh, it, I'm putting it in the bad. Easily. Yo, I'm liking how this show is getting started. I saw some negative headlines from other critics, but straight up, I don't agree. They can have their opinion and they can just do whatever they need to do if they're whatever. They're them. I'm different. What's fine for them is not fine for me. And if you're interested in getting an honest reaction to a movie or a TV show, then I got you. Because in the end, for some of us, Avatar The Last Airbender is more than just a show. With its rich storytelling, its captivating characters and timeless themes, this is a journey that transcends generations. Overall, I'm giving this first episode of Avatar a strong 9 out of 10. It's bending expectations. Now, I'm going to be working my way through the rest of the series and let me know in the comments if you want me to come back and do an overall series review, but I just want to leave you with some sage advice of my own. As you fly through the different bending realms of Avatar, let's try to do more than just binge watch. Let's savor the timeless teachings of friendship, courage, and finding ourselves. Seriously, I really want you to take time to soak up the enchantment of this crazy, awesome world. And then come back to me and let me know what your thoughts are at the end of the show. That's all I have for this one. Yo, if you're new here, like, subscribe, come back for more. Until next time, I'ma check you all later. Peace.